Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. We are here, as you've seen from the bit of a start we're going to. We're going to go check it out. I think we are walking to the entrance. I'm guessing we're going to have to pay. I think we have to pay because Lambo, we didn't have to, which was pretty good. But um, yeah, I don't know how much it's going to be. But, and then we'll go around and we'll see what excites us, film what's new, what's fresh, going to have a look at a couple of things. Have no idea. Should have planned it a little bit better. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of a map to see where everything is. You think we, we, think we should, shouldn't we? Yeah, should do. Should do. And Joe is going to help me film a little bit today. And we'll, uh, yeah, see what's on and see what's new. Let's have a look. This is what happens to when you forget to pre-register. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Prepare? Failure to prepare, prepare to fail. Yep. Yeah, try some cheese. Black cow. Here we go. Nice. Oh, cool. Will, will Joanna like it? Ooh, cheese. <laughs> Everyone who has mentioned the crust on the tower that we've got, we do use this. This helps a little bit, not a lot. I've never actually read it. Dad's always said to read it. But... We don't have time for that right now. What him? We, we don't have got time. time. <laughs> It'll take me ages. No, but I'm dyslexic. Everyone knows. <laughs> but yeah, so we use that. Why do you use that? What's it good for? Uh, destroying the crust on top of the lagoon. You know the lagoon where people mention that the crust on top of the lagoon is massive. Yeah. We do use those. Oh, watch yourself, John. We do use those to kind of minimal, minimal it down. We used to have a separator, I'll explain about that one again another time. And that used to be a really good job, and there was no crust on top at all. So, uh, yeah, it does, it does it all right, it just helps. It helps, but it doesn't, it doesn't cure it, it helps. Yeah. Where are you taking me? Found a cow brush. Ooh. Very excited. Like, oh, I, I, I would rather go to the company that sell it and not a different company, if that makes sense. Not, like, not a second company, because surely you'll get a better deal. Logic, farm logic. Don't like spending money. Let's look. Yes. Twelve o'clock now, is it? What time is it? Have you explained to people what this is? Yes. Yeah. It is. It's rugby. This is my last. If Joe watched my last video. I did. Yeah, I played rugby on Saturday. Um, you should see my arms. You should see my back. Yeah, you look a mess. Sandy, very sandy. Everyone knows sand is coarse. Good draining, but it's very coarse. And yeah, ouch. Seems pretty sturdy. I feel like you were unimpressed with that car brush. Not as much, no. Sorry, this company. I keep feeling that someone's looking at us. Oh, rich tea biscuits. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're really close to my face. Is it just my face? No. Oh. Like, can you see this? Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Joe, I've got your bed. <laughs> ah, you're the one that'll be sleeping in the shed tonight, mate. So, what's that for? Cows sleeping? Cow mats. They're in the back shed. Yeah. It's got cow mats on it. And the Lowe's building needs new cow mats. But we need new Lowe's building because the roof's bollocks. So, we're going to get a new building before we're going to get new cow mats in there. No, we're going to get a new roof and new cow mats, so might as well put a new building because the design of the building is rubbish. So that is why we get a new building and then we put a robot in. Or two. I mean two. Why? You've got a lot to sort out. <laughs> and we've got a farm shop cafe to go. <laughs> Loads of money to spend. 
It's done. Good. Worked. You got Dermy. Put this on it. Go. Recommend. What, so you just put it on the foot? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't use a spray. I use that stuff. You get a paintbrush, and if you've got Dermy, it just kills it. It just kills it. It's so good. And the pot lasts me forever. Oh, look, it's here. Come on, come on. So it's like that. So it's like a paste. Yeah. But I, because I foot bath so much, I don't get doing me a lot anyway. But this stuff, when we did have doing me, used it. And like, like I said, I bought it two years ago. I've still got half tub. Yes, John. So what was that guy just saying? Was he trying to sell uh, you? He was trying to sell me a calf feeder. Um, a calf bagging tube, different to the bags that we use. I'm not sure the bagging videos. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting, very flexible tube, and you can stand it up, you don't have to pour it in all the time. So, it looks pretty good. We might go back to it. Should we go, we'll go back to it later? Yeah, okay. So, we'll go back to it. Right guys, so what I was talking about before is the stomach tuber, and this is the salesman who spoke to me for Jeff. And I think it's a really good idea. Why is it a good idea, Jim? Well, it's an improvement on the, the, the existing ones on the market. The benefits of this one, that it's a flexible tube and not rigid, which means that if you come up against resistance, you can actually feel resistance. You've also got a mouthpiece now which protects the actual pipe. Right. Because if you look at the one that most people tend to use, you'll find that that's all got rough when it's being chewed. Yeah, the calves chew it. I've never done a video on bagging calves yet. This, I'll do a video of using this machine afterwards and after the show. Um, yeah, what happens is the calf will chew here, or chew, say, the pipe here, and they'll damage the pipe, and then it won't last very long, and then you have to buy a new one. You have to buy a new one. Yeah. So with this, this acts in three ways. One, the cab will chew on that and it keeps it content. It also will produce saliva as well. Yep. And also for aiming which side the cab is got to go, down the left hand side, down the left -hand side. is where the escoffers is. Yeah. So up to four litre bottle as well with your air bleed there. Yeah. Air bleed is quite a big one. Uh, so on a two litres of colostrum, this will come in half the time as it will with a conventional one as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, really good as well. Obviously, it's in a bottle. When you tube in your um, when you tube in your calves with like three to four liters, whatever you can tube it with at the time. So you, what you normally do, so you'll have a tube on the floor and you'll put it down the calf, and then you'll be grabbing the you put it in there, put it in there with the with the uh, tube. What happens is you're picking a bucket up and trying to fill it up. But this has already got the stuff in, hasn't it? Yeah. So this it won't gonna go everywhere, will it? No. That goes like that, and then that fits in. Yeah. There you go. And when you finish, just make sure that's all nice and clear, and then pull that out. One thing we did omit, that the tube is actually done on weight. So you set this to the weight of the calf, which is about 50 kilos. Okay, so you know exactly how far down that tube is, that is actually going. So it's a safety that it goes far enough without going too far. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a really clever machine, and I'm, I'm well impressed with it, because on my, uh, on Mars, obviously we have jars in the milking parlour, so I can take this off, what we do with buckets, I just fill the bucket up, so take this off, fill it with costume, I'm not, I'm not, part. this is not a sponsored thing, this is a really good idea, I'll take it off, I've got the stuff in here, I can go in there, put it in, and just put that straight upside down. Currently with the bag, if anyone bags cars in the watching this, you get your bag and you get your bucket and you're tipping it in whilst you're trying to keep the calf straight. So this has already got it in, it's really easy and it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, what is the price of these? These are £55. £55, what a special price for me today? It comes with a teat and a cap as well. Okay, so yeah. that comes as a... So you've got a complete start kit there all together. So you've got a drencher and you've got a, 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 a feeding bottle showing one. We've got a special price today for uh, special price today, we do a show would, would be £50. £50. Pounds. Plus the bag. Well, not yeah. bad. Instead of £55. Pretty, sounds pretty good to me. I can just... We can just put it on our bill with fours, who we use anyway, and so out. So I'm going to take one of these home. I'll tell Dad when I get home. I'm not going to ask him. Just, just put it on his account. Like It'll that. be fine. And I think... I think these are a really good idea. Hopefully it'll work. You say they last about 12 months. Oh, and the rest. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to break on them apart from running over them on a tractor or treading on them. Yeah, and hopefully it's designed no, really. by a vet from New Zealand as well. It took two years to get it right. 
yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it sounds but, like a good idea. It sounds like something I would use and it would improve cars. And instead of a hard, thick um, bag going down the throat, you've got this, which is flexible. Yeah, a lot softer and it's better for the car. Down to the Thank yeah. you very much, Jeff. Okay. I think you go yourself to sale. Thank you. Cheers. You should probably get red, though. You don't want to be standing out. We've got silver, the actually. We're the, only, we're the only farmers who've got silver tractors. Any farmers out there that have a silver tractor, get in touch now. <laughs> and prove my boyfriend wrong. Oh, drop your handbag. I'll tell you what. Oh, look at that booty. <laughs> oh, there's a side seat. There's a side seat. Sold. Here we go, do you want it? Oh, oh, oh. Your hand. It's not exactly a carriage, but you know. <laughs> you know we're talking about the uh, cross busters. So instead of using a separator or a cross buster, a cross buster that kind of works. You can use your um, stirrers, but we just hire them in. We don't really buy them because I don't really know. Again, it's expense to hire it in. It's probably like. So what does it do? Sorry. Sorry. Right, what this does is you know the crust on top of the lagoon. That you were talking about before, yeah. Yeah. So this will smash it up. So when you pump it, it'll all pump together and you won't have a big thick layer at the bottom. Okay. So obviously you just take, when you pump it, it just takes the thin stuff away and then this will have the thick stuff all on top. So it keeps so everything this, moving. This will smash the thick stuff into the thin stuff and you'll get a bit of thicker to start with. It'll be a constant uh, flow. Uh, flow of poo. <laughs> we love poo. Life is about poo and farming. <laughs> Great. Poo makes, poo make The world go poo round. Makes the world go round. The farm or go round. Poo makes grass grow. Oh, hello. Hello, nice to see you. You're right. Yes, you. Yeah, fine. Hey guys, we are near the robots, something I wanted to look at the whole time. Ben from Lely, Lely said he'd chat to me a little <laughs> bit about it. We'll just get the basics on it, we don't want to go too far in depth. Basics of the year, which I'll, ex uh, I'll kind of explain and then I'll ask Ben if we're going in the right direction. So, cows come in when they're ready to be milked. The system will know if it's been milked in the last hour, is that right? Yeah, or well, well, it's due to be milked. Or it's due to yeah. be milked, got a fat milk on it. Um, what is really clever with the machine, it's got the lasers in it, so it'll recognise every cow. With the cow's tags on him, the uh, machine will recognise where the cow's teats are for that exact, exact cow. So that is really clever. So clean the cow's teats first, and then with the lasers, it'll sense where the teats are, because some people who are milk cows will always know that the teats are everywhere on some cows. So you've got teats on all different places. So the good thing about these lasers is they'll remember it and they'll go straight to it, less cow stress and all that. If the cow has been milked, what it will do is just open the front gate and the cow will know to walk out. Obviously they want to come in here because they're getting fed all the time and um, they quite like the milking process and it relieves them. Uh, really know what else to put into it. It's very clever. Average is 2.8 milkings per day, is that right? Yeah, can be, yeah. be over three. Depends on your herd. Depends on the herd, yeah. depends on how much cows have to yeah. depends on how much milk that cow's giving. You've got these highly yielders like me, who I'm only milking twice a day. Some of them are giving like 55 litres a day, which is massive. So, if we've, um, if that cow's giving 55, she milks four times, the bag's not getting stretched as much, and she's only dropping 15 litres at a time, which is a lot less stress than the cow. With the tags, the collars, yeah. it does the, um, so it records the cutting. So if anyone knows about cutting, which is how the cow develops and digests the food really well, so it will record how much it's cutting, and if it's cutting more or less, it will tell the computer to flag up, which I thought was really interesting. Ben was telling me about it before, and that is massive for uh, cow health and cow Yeah, based on how much she's using. Yeah. She's utilising it better. Utilising the feed. The more she the more fibre she's got in there, the more she utilises all the energy that's in there to get through her body, digesting the system, turn into milk. Turn into milk, which is the main thing, keeping uh, milk production high and cow uh, health. Um, obviously, we are a grazing system. I always want to graze my cows, and my cows want to go out of grass in summer. In winter, it's not going to be possible, everyone knows it. Um, but the system does work if someone doesn't. Yeah, yeah it works. So, uh, we have a system called the graze wheel that fits at the end of the system near the exit door, and that will determine if they go out to a field or will they come back in again. Uh, and then, obviously, the cows then get used to the robots, so they come back in when they want to from the field. We have a lot of these systems working over in Ireland, a 
few in this country as well. Ireland being predominantly grass-fed anyway. Yeah. Uh, so it's a high, 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 high uh, grazing system there. That's, so. The robots have got to fit my system. You know, I can't, I don't want to fit the robot system. I, I'm mad for cows being out, like I explained. Uh, I think it's the right way of doing it. So that's if I was the robot, I'd have to get a purpose-built shed, purpose-built shed next to a field that works well and right, have right tracks and stuff like that. Cell count, does it record cell count? It can do, yeah, you've got obviously milk use here as well, so it gets the dump milk, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so if you've got a cow that's coming in and it's freshly calved and you want to keep the plastering, then you get milk for use, which is then sent uh, to a separate system which can be kept so you can feed it to calves. Again, if you've got antibiotic milk, high cell count milk, that will then automatically passed on. The, the, gra- the great thing about it is in between every cow, everything's being re-sterilised, uh, the brushes are being chemically cleaned, so there's no cross-contamination, there's no contamination going back into the milk either. Yeah, that was that was massive as well. I didn't know this. This is a new island. The brushes that clean the tea tops here, and then you've got a high gen chemic, is it? Yeah, with chemic chem- with chemicals in there, they clean it, and then it rinse it off after less, less contamination, or no contamination between the cows, basically. Which is, which is massive, keeping that health high and keeping the cows really happy. As you can see in here, these cows are really content. They are chilled out to anything. Um, yeah, they, look, they look very happy and they look really good with the machine. It takes a bit of, takes labor time off myself. So it's five hours a day milking at the moment. How many robots would I need? Well, we're making 110, 100. How many you robots? Need, you would need two robots. Two robots. Yeah. And with, do... with your yield, you need two yeah. robots. Yeah. And that would do it all right. Yeah. Two so robots. you'd have to these units, one of these, which is an A4. So that has your, your, all you need from robot. And then with every every um, system, you need a central unit, which is here. Which so is every. To it. Yeah, so every, every robot. Every robot. System, every robot has Every robot, but this is a sub robot on its own, the A4, and then with the A4 you need a central unit. The good thing is, once you've got one central unit, it will supply two robots, so you only need one central unit. Inside the central unit, you've got the milk um, Obviously, PDB, which is where the computer system is, and also where your chemicals are, so your teeth sprays, your alkalines, and your acids for either cleaning the units out, or right. your teeth brushes out as well. So that supplies two robots. That's clever. And uh, what was also clever with the machine is with the lasers of the cow's teeth, it actually recognised where its teeth was. So when it's spraying it with the iodine, it'll only spray it on the teeth and it won't spray it on the whole bag. At the moment when I spray my cows, I should just spray all around to keep the spray on, using less I- using more iodine and with this system using less iodine. The big thing as well, this is t- it's a Bloody good machine. The thing is, as well, when it stops, when one quarter was finished milking, it, um, it took one of the cups off, didn't it? So it was only milking on three. So you're not over milking that quarter, which is a really clever system. So if you've got one tea that's very slow milking, the other three will come off yep. and it will keep on it, which is just massive. It saves so tea damage to an end. Yeah. It's not any tea damage at all. And like I said, the robot with my robot, with my robot, with my uh, milk system and my pumps and stuff, it just stays on the unit the whole time. Yeah. Uh, this computer is really good. This will be it turns off when I look at it. It's just basically what it's doing now is it, it, it's basically going through a cycle again now, so it's looking to see when the cows are coming in. It just resets itself now. And this is basically an upstream for T4C. So it's the main dashboard that you would see on T4C computer system, which you obviously get on your home on your computer then which follows with it. Um, as I say, it records numerous amounts of things, milk activity. Um, it can do the rumination that we were talking about before from the um, from the tags. Um, there are other things we can add to it as well, obviously, to, to see you, to give you an idea of conductivity in the system. We can do um, uh, from bulling if we need to. There's yeah, things just, you can do with that for activity. Just, just thinking that when the cow's got the tags on and the collars on, can that use use for the heat detection as well? Yeah, to a degree because it pick. It's a bit harder when you get to cows coming out of the field because obviously their activity goes up a bit. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. go down because it will then realise their activity go up when they're walking anyway. Because it works on averages, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it works on averages. Same so in summer, system. your first two two weeks, yeah. you can technically, it's going to pick the well, whole, yeah, your cows days, yeah. And then it will go, then it will come down and it will adjust. Um, but it means everything. Mean, so we've got fuses as well, so we need how active the cows coming into the robot and how many times it's been refused going in. Um, everything, milking speed, you name it. It's got it. Look here. 
and then, then, it, then in, from this as well, it's better obviously onto a big computer screen with the reports, um, which then you can look at, and you can look at them in the daily, you can look at the, the group average, the herd average, um, we've got a lot of our other systems with it, but for instance, like a, an automatic feeding system like the um, Vector, we can compile all the information and see how feed efficiency goes as well, so how much does it cost a new per litre, yeah, yeah. Uh, including the cake, and including also the forage you're coming into it. Well, yeah, that's the massive thing, isn't it? Uh, farming now, it's cost productions, so it's either per acre of your arable, litres, and it's daily one live cake for your, uh, your dairy cows. So your Vector, not your dairy cows, sorry, your beef cows, so your Vector, which you were talking about, going a bit against it, but a bit again, Talking about something else, the vector that will concentrate how much you're feeding if you're doing it to beakers because those are all beakers as well, and you can get your live uh, daily live game. Yeah, and that's hopefully, it. you bring that down. And if you save, say, you save 20 days, 20 days at feed. I was speaking to someone the other day and saying it costs him one pound 72 to feed a cow a day or to feed a beaker a day. <coughs> you're looking at 40 quid saving, you do 200, 200 beakers a year, sorry, and it's a big saving. I really like this system, I think it's a very good quality system. Vector system, fresh feed all the time, that's what it does, it does it ad lib, goes down, scans the feed base, so as you wait where you feed down your feed um, trough or your feed alley, um, and when it drops to a certain amount, it will then tell the um, system that it wants another batch mixing up and puts it in front. The key to it all is it's always they're always getting fresh feed all the time. So of course the intakes go up, and we want intakes of forage, which are cheaper for us to produce, um, to go up. We don't want to be spending too much money on concentrates, which obviously then are detrimental to yeah. our profit. Concentrates are very expensive, aren't they? Yeah. And then lastly, added to the go on automation now. This is going to be a little bit of an automation vlog of farming. You've got the Juno as well, which we we're yep. looking at as well, which is really cool. I thought that was a really good idea. If we put the new shed up with robots, this isn't happening anytime soon. But it's nice to know what we can do and the possibilities out there. That Juno pushing up and going around, and the, the minute it was pushing up, even these five cows, two of them got up to eat. Yep. So again, it's pushing the productivity, isn't it? Yeah, they get used. They get used to the sound of it, so they get used to the beat, and then they know by the beat, then something's going to happen. Here, it takes over. They come in. It's pushing the beat up. It's always pushing a bit of fresh more up to, so it encourages them to eat more. So it does. It increases their intake. Yeah, yeah. So it's massive. This, <laughs> this actual little bit of clip. Is it, we did just come to Lely because we've got everything working, nothing just involved in Lely, Lely, we just thought we'd come and have a chat with everyone and they were really welcoming to have a chat. Thank you very much Ben for taking some time, time out yeah. and uh, we'll get back to something else where uh, we'll wander off with Joanna. That's it guys, me and Joe are on the way home, getting a little bit tired, it's been a long day of driving, had a really good day on our field so I'm walking about. Uh, I'd like to say thanks for Ben for taking the time speaking to me for at the Lily stand, Lely stand, every time I get that wrong, at Lely stand, just looking at the automated milking robots, looking at the automated um, the feeders and the uh, pushing up machines, really quite interesting. Appreciate the time they took to speak to me about it. Again, this is in the future project, five, ten years down the line, but it's nice to know what there is currently obviously things are going to change things are going to develop especially what they're doing that will develop in the next five years and hopefully it will increase and become even more uh, good great it improve in the way it's doing so looking at about two machines i want to go into have a machine that will do grazing so if we are putting a new shed up we will definitely have grazing involved in it um yeah so i really appreciate it cheers thank you ben spoke to jeff uh, dairy spares with the bagging tube, bagging tube, bagging bottle. Uh, what we'll do, we'll do a video. I don't want to do a video next week. I've got a video I want to put up next week already. So um, I'll do it in a couple of weeks and we'll compare the two and we'll I'll show you what we do with the calves with bagging them and with the new bottle and see how it works. The theory behind it all really makes sense. That's why I went for it and that's why I bought it because he's, he, he might have sold it well, but it looked like it works and that is something that I want to do. Looks like it's making life easier. Looks like it'll last a little bit longer, a little bit more expensive. It was 50 pounds compared to 17 pounds that the bags are. So it's about three times more expensive, but hopefully it'll last longer because the bags don't last me that long. Spoke to a guy called Will also, who uh, recognized me from YouTube. Thank you, Will, for taking the time to speak to me, saying hello. We got a picture taken as well. He's got the picture, I don't know where it'd be, so give us a tag in it and I'll try and share it, Will. Uh, yeah, it was really nice seeing you. 
and a guy called Richard. We were speaking to him. That was just by the off chance. He saw me filming, asking what I was doing. He is uh, a few years older than me. Seems like he went to my school, which is a college right close to me. And I went to a college at the RAU, which is the Royal Ad Ad Cultural University now. I, it used to be the RAC uh, college. So he went up and I went down. So we've just kind of crossed paths that way. So uh, yeah, it was really interesting speaking to him and how the dairy's changed and how farming's changed and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it was good. Thank you very much for watching this, guys. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and we'll see you next week. See you in a bit.